Hi everyone, this is Amin and welcome to the last touch up of this playlist. So we started to install everything on Docker, like in a Docker Compose file to have everything. Uh, we started with InfluxDB and then the Grafana and then we added Python to that, so three things. And I showed you, you can have your uh, monitoring dashboard and then add with the public IP address with Google instance. And uh, now, what do we need? We need a DNS. So I'm using the DNS of my company and the company I'm working for. Then the, with the domain and creating keys, you can make it HTTPS. I use HA proxy. So let's add HA proxy to our uh, Docker Compose file. And in the end, you need pertainer. And with pertainer, you're gonna see how your uh, Docker containers are communicating with each other. We're gonna add these two and a little talk about those stuff. So let's see. We know that DNS is a kind of service that you have a name here instead of the IP address and rest of the things. It is something that you should pay for that and you do need a domain. And uh, we are not having a domain right now, so we cannot set a DNS server or like set a name here. This part actually should be passed. The other thing is that at the same uh, time for HTTPS, the thing is that you need a domain or subdomain. I'll show you how you can do it if you have a subdomain or domain, but in our case, it's not doable. But let's bring a terminal. This is my instance, my Google instance that we created with each other at the beginning of this video. If I do ls, what do we have? I added some files here. So the Docker file, we had it, Docker compose. I added this one, ha proxy config. And for the pertainer, this folder, pertainer data. What do we have here? Uh, first, let me show you the configuration of the HA proxy. If I do Veeam HA proxy, we have some sort of things here. Let's go up, up. It starts from here. It is the like the default configuration of that. You can find it like everywhere if you Google it, even on the HA proxy website. The first step is the global. We are not going to change something here and also on the default, nothing. Just leave it as it is. Then for the front end, so we have one front end here. What is the front end? It just binds uh, whatever you have to a specific port. So we are saying we have this port, actually you should open it near firewall, which I did. Uh, you do need this one to bind everything, this is means everything, to this one. What it does for you, it is uh, your dashboard, your like the dashboard that uh, HA proxy gives it to you to deal with your things, to see how your system works. And with this line, like it is for the refresh, you can, you can change it, it's up to you. I put it in 10 seconds, you can change it to whatever you want. Uh, for the authentication in this way, you're gonna add it, this is the username, this is the password, so admin and whatever you would like to have. This is the first front end, and it is uh, nothing but getting your data, your stats, as we, are, we call that the stats. The other front end, I call that graph on HTTP. So I'm saying you should bind every IP address, every port, whatever, to port 80. And finally, mode HTTP. So if you have an SSL uh, key, if you have an SSL key, I mean, we have two types of SSL keys. You can get the certified and you can get the self-signed. So we're going to create a self-signed to show you how we can do it. But in general, if you have it with this line, which I commented out, you can say that you, you should redirect every HTTP request to HTTPS. And this is the function SSLFC that does the thing for you. But now we don't have it. And we do need a like a backend server, and our default backend server is what we are saying. Like after that, then another one for Grafana HTTPS, and this is where we are going to put our certificates. So 
uh, we're gonna add this line and here for example your domain is xyz.com so it will be etc ssl xyz name of the xyz.com name of the folder and let me type it here if you have a if you have a website like www.xyzxyz.com it should be exactly like that and here your file would be so xyz.com.pem and what is this pem if you work with nginx you see we have a cert file and we have a key file two separated files but in uh, HA proxy, we have a pen file which is the mixture, so you should mix them together. And then you say what is your like the backup server, and uh, yeah, that's it. And it's your backup server, all of them mode HTTP. And this one, when you set up servers, it means you're gonna have a different servers if you have a load balancing scenario which is totally out of the scope of what we are going to do but anyway just one server and grafana and this is the port so i'm gonna i did something let me save it what else do we have we have the pertainer data here and it is the same i just followed the instruction on the website so if you follow the website you you're, you're gonna get this file let's go to our docker compose file so we Darker compose YAML. It is the things that I added. So the version is the same. Services, the first one, pertainer. So the image pertainer for sure, latest. I named that restart unless it stopped, but it, I mean, kind of the same with always. Security option, no, uh, the network the same. These two files are files from your computer, and this is what it's going to get from the the config file i mean they are saying whatever we have here just map them it means map so when you have a local thing on your computer and you want to map it to your docker file when you're selling it is the way you just come up with the address colon and the address so port 9000 it is the port pertainer works on that python is the same ha proxy so i added this one as well so for ha proxy look image uh the latest one name restart so we're gonna open some ports 80 to bind 8443 for https and this is the local port of hlproxy network the same monitoring and here so we're gonna say this file which is which i just showed you uh it should be mapped to here there is one hlproxy config by default in this address so in this way, I'm saying just replace this one and put it in read-only version. And if you have a certificate, how you're going to do that, you're going to, again, the same, like your domain name, xyz.com permission, put it here. So in two different places, we mentioned like the location of the file and the rest of it is Grafana and yeah, InfluxDB. So nothing different. We're going to go out of this so how we can create our ssl thing there is a simple command for that something like that so we are gonna say sudo open ssl and node two files as i said we have one key file and one certificate in the end what do we have number of the days let's create something valid for 365 and hit on the enter so it's going to ask you some questions name of the country that you are inside that so let's say it's a two letters yeah so canada a state or province uh i'm just gonna say yes it doesn't matter which city uh whatever organization something and the unit name Then it says uh, your common name AA, email address AA at sign AA.com. So now you have your files. If you go to the address that you gave, like etc SSL, 
like this if you do ctrl c cd ctrl v you're going to be there do the ls you have these two files the self-signed certificate and self-signed key and if you do chat the self-signed key you see it is your self-signed key and the cr key is the same so you have both of them the things that you created these are your codes you can use them but since they are just for the video i'm gonna do ls and i'm gonna say remove uh whatever you have with self here i'm not fan of keeping them like that yeah they're not here. we're not gonna use them just i wanted to show you how you can do it and let's do the darker ps to see what do we have here so we have our python script that we talked about that we have our uh, grafana and we have our influx db what else are we supposed to do we're, we're gonna do what we're gonna just set again the darker file darker compose and up dash dash detach what will happen here it's gonna bring it up again and it will see the three previous containers are working so nothing but for the two uh, new documents it's gonna create them i mean it's gonna for the images it's gonna create them darker compose up oh it doesn't work why because we are not in the correct directory so we should be cd i guess home and here why it didn't work because by default you are here and it searches when you say docker compose for it searches for this file the yaml file and it couldn't find it so if i do docker compose up here detach it works and it's going to install the new images <laughs> We're good, do the clear, do docker ps. So we see we have the portainer, which is here and up nine seconds ago. And then we have the HA proxy. Let's check what we have. Since we restarted everything, probably this one is restarted. If we refresh it, it's not restarted actually, it was working, but let's restart everything to see. Okay, previous services were working we added two new things first let me copy the ip address which is this one i'm gonna copy that come here and paste it here what was the port for the pertainer it was a why it is like that it was 8404 if i'm not mistaken yes so it asks for the user and password we added i guess it was admin and whatever yes so it is a dashboard for look it, these are the back ends or and front end uh, that we added we have uh, like one grafana server we have one grafana http it is the back end these are the front ends and for every query you can see things will be changed here it is the part from HA proxy. What HA proxy is doing right now for us, it is binding everything to port 80. So if HA proxy works properly, we should open this one because we said Grafana, we added the port 3000. We should be able to open Grafana without any ports. We said bind everything to port 80. So just hit on the enter. And that's super cool. It is working, right? beautiful so we have it we have it even without port 3000 so it is the way ha proxy works and uh, if we have the domain name and the set those keys actually we can get it like in s uh https and with a name this is the first part the second part and actually the last part we're gonna come here and mention the 9000 which is for our portainer so first time when you open it it is like this you're gonna do what you're gonna come up with the password so let's say something like that create the user so 
we have our user here. If we click on get started, it shows uh, we have one stack, five containers, the volumes, the images. If we click here, look, it gives us information. If there is a problem, if they're not communicating with each other, we have our wireless monitoring, we have the pertainer, InfluxDB, Grafana, everything is here, everything. And if I want to do something, for example, I want to see if everything is good in, you know, in the side of uh, InfluxDB, I'm going to click on that. Look, it says even the IP address or the ports. I'm going to click on that. It gives me the ID of the, uh, the container, the status, the Docker information, the image, like the address. Everything is super cool. And even here, it tells it, it, what network they are working with or on which network they are located. They are inside this network. This is the IP address. If I click on the network, what I'm going to get, then I'm going to get all of the users. So in this way, I mean, it is right now you'll see it is way easier than the commands that I told you in the Docker tutorial. So with the uh, portainer, you can come here, you can see uh, like the, the containers that are in the same network, the IP addresses, you can, they can ping each other or not. And if you do back and come here, so you have the logs. If there is a log here, you have your console. Even you can do like, the cons you have the direct console here so we are in the console of uh, our influx db and uh, yeah it gives you a lot of things that you can do as you can see the left hand side icons you have your dashboard image so you can even play with the image if you want to look this one it's saying this one's unused so even we can understand we are not using it and plenty of things, plenty of options that you're going to get. All in all, uh, Portainer is a very powerful uh, tool in your toolbox if you want to work with Docker containers and if you want to have a lot of containers or like Docker files or Docker Compose. And at this moment, this playlist is done. So hopefully you find that kind of helpful for you. If you like that, just uh, show me a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Stay safe. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.